What's happening my fellow geeks and geek heads? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris and today marks episode 2 in the Ghost Who Walks, my phantom cosplay construction. Now today's video is solely based on the molding, casting and a uh, little bit of extra work on the cow and the eye mask. So the cowl in question was designed on a 3D scan of my head by the very talented Art Deving. I also want to thank my good buddy Miles for doing the initial scan of my head. I did need an updated scan of my head because the last time I had a casting done was 2015? 16, I think. It's been a while. So anyway, Art Deving went above and beyond and did a beautiful file and also managed to match the texture of my actual bodysuit. It's absolutely brilliant. He's even included stitching seams. Now, this was printed in Fact Fox uh, in China. I've used them a lot. I use them for my Robert Pattinson uh, face casting. I've used them for Freddy Bus before. These guys are absolutely brilliant and very affordable. Now, I had this file sized up by 3% uh, to possibly allow for shrinkage of the urethane that we're going to be casting the cowl in. But as you'll see in the video, it didn't exactly work out. Now, along with the cowl is the eye mask. Now I want to keep it as close as possible to the Billy Zane look of the eye mask. So I had this printed separately. I've gone ahead and just glued some giant playing cards down as an extra flange for when we mold it. And I've just uh, hot glued it to some paper cups just to keep it suspended up like that. So this is going to be pretty straightforward in terms of molding. In terms of the cowl, it's going to be brush up silicon as well, much like this, but we are going to be doing a two piece plaster bandage job. And that is opposed to fiberglass. And I will touch on that in some shitty commentary. Let's not waste any time. With that being said, let's get to it. Oh, it is time for some shitty commentary. So this is pretty self-explanatory, geeks and geekettes. You guys have seen me do this before dozens of times. So all in all, uh, in terms of the cowl and the eye mask, I did nine layers of silicon. Now, some layers were thickened up with the thick sill silicon. You add a couple of drops in and you're able to um, put it on a vertical surface and it just helps thicken up certain areas. So that right there, is a thickened up um, layer and right up to nine layers. I just felt nine was good because you don't want it too thick because you have to keep in mind we're not going to have a seam line up the back or anything. We need to peel this off in one piece. Now, usually I do fiberglass for the, uh, the, the mother mold, but in this case, I did plaster bandage. Reason being, it's cheaper and also because it may not fit. This cow may not work out in the end and I kind of knew that going into it because I had this print sized up uh, 3% and I didn't want to have to waste or well not waste but spend a lot of money on fiberglass and also I needed a quick turnaround with this and plaster bandage is just the best way to go it's it's like that old friend it's always there always reliable and always works a treat even though it's not as strong as fiberglass per se it's still it, it's still a money saver and also it's just you get the job done a lot quicker so I was able to smash out um, the mother mold for the the, the cowl and the eye mask in about an hour all up and I also just did some reinforcement strips there down and across just helps with strengthening the mold now for the front half I'm just gonna grab some Vaseline and this is gonna act as a release agent because the front half of the mother mold is gonna be overlapping the back half so this is gonna uh, close together like a shell um, instead of having keys and stuff like that it's just a very simple way to go about it now, it was very cold the day I was doing this, and there are my gray hairs. Oh, God, I'm getting old. Um, it was very cold the day I was uh, molding and um, doing the mother mold on this, so everything was taking forever to dry. But once it did, everything uh, came off pretty easily. Um, and I love this. This is so therapeutic when I'm peeling off silicon. But also, you really want to take your time because you don't want any parts to get caught and rip in certain details that will affect your casting. Now, the, the big mama also was um was was peeling off the silicon uh from the cowl you 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 have a bit of nerves there going into it because especially uh when it comes time to going uh, peeling it from where the chin is and the nose once you go over the the chin and the nose it's smooth sailing from there but to help i um i brush on some detergent or you can also brush on some vaseline some petroleum jelly and then that way the silicon is slippery and then it's easily uh, able to peel off instead of sticking to itself if it's just raw silicon it does get quite grippy and and uh, I've just got my feet on the uh, the platform there and there we go over the nose and she's off and the detail was great it picked up all the detail of that beautiful file that Art Deving did and that's uh, that's the mold piece back together now for the urethane 
We're going to be using F140 fast setting polyurethane. Um, this is a great urethane. This is very user friendly when it comes to doing slush casts. I've got my violet tint there and I also have a transparent tint and I also have a lighter tint. It's actually a flesh tint, but that was a test I did there. That's the F140, as you can see right there. Um, Color matching something like this is very tricky. When you're trying to color match, oh sorry, that's also the black tint for the eye mask. When you're trying to color match to the suit, the purple suit, it's very tricky, but you'll see what I do later in the video that really helps it color match the rest of the suit. Now the mix ratio is 100 to 50, not 100 to 100 this time around. So your working time, and it was pretty cold, mind you. Working time is about, you got about a good eight minutes. I know it's very specific, but you got about a good eight minutes. That's the good thing about urethane. The only thing is you have to keep it moving in the mold once you pour it all in. Now I did three total slush coats. This was a total of 300 grams. So uh, for the part A, it was 200 grams, and then the part B, it was a 100 gram, and then the tints mixed into it. And yeah, you got about a good eight minutes working time, and then it's gonna start to kick. You can add a kicker to it. I prefer not to. Adding a kicker to it gives you about a minute or two. And because this, this doesn't move as quick as, say, a super cast resin, uh, you, you may run out of time and not get the full coverage you want and all the details, you, you, you rush it. So I'd rather not add any kicker or any, any accelerant. And that way you just get a nice clean casting because that's what I wanted. I wanted everything to be even on the inside. And again, three total slush castings for this one. If you are doing this in warmer weather, your working time's probably gonna be cut in half, especially if you're doing this in direct sunlight, um, which can help sometimes, but in this case, I really wanted to take my time, so the cold weather was definitely uh, an added advantage. And there I am draining out the excess, so you can see it kicking and gelling. Now, the eye mask was extremely easy. Um, this time around, I only did two slush casts, but you will see later in the video that I don't end up using this particular eye mask, but again, it was such a quick turnaround, I kind of also had to allow for things to go wrong or things that wouldn't work, trial and error, stuff like that. Again, just very straightforward, even though it did get a little bit <laughs> messy. I, I, in hindsight, I should have made my flange a bit bigger. That's what she said. But overall, like the casting process was great because uh, urethane can be quite temperamental sometimes. It, it can sometimes look like beaded water on skin. It doesn't want to um, cover everything perfectly, but in the F140's case, or the F series range from Barnes, it's great. You get good coverage and you can get some brilliant castings out of there. And if, um, um, if I'm being honest, I did leave it for a good 24 hours, both pieces, just to really properly let them kick. Now, when it came time to demolding, you really want to take your time, because some parts can be a little bit thinner than others, and you don't want to tear anything, especially when you're removing it from around the perimeter, as you see right there. You want to release everything, because it does grip on um, <clears throat> to the plaster bandage and stuff like that. You can um, brush Vaseline on the mother mold, which I should have done in hindsight. But again, I'm in such a rush trying to get this done. But take your time, especially when it comes to a full head mask. You know, really bunch it up like I'm doing there and get the face released and stuff like that and then slowly release it out of the mold. And again, I love this part. It's so exciting, but also so nerve wracking at the same time. And all in all, I couldn't have asked for a better casting. It was so clean and it picked up all that beautiful detail of the cow. I thought there were gonna be air bubbles everywhere, but nope, it was just clean as a whistle. And the same goes for the eye mask. The eye mask just, it was so smooth, so clean, so sharp. Um, and I love it. It's its its such a brilliant urethane to work with. I definitely wanna do work with it more in the future. I, I do get a bit intimidated with urethane sometimes, but now that I've realized that the F series instead of the S series, because the S series is a slow set, you're gonna be there till the cows come home working with that, whereas the F series is much faster. Now, just getting some small hobby trimming scissors and trimming, thing, trimming everything together. And I suppose we should try the cow on, right? Okay, we got a bit of work to do here, geeks and geekettes, because this cowl is just way too big. And shame on me for sizing it up 3%. I just thought the urethane would shrink, but in this case it didn't. So we're gonna have to tighten the chin area and we're gonna have to slice the neck and chin right down the middle. So I'm just gonna grab my trusty Stanley knife and slice it as straight as I can. And having that seam there, 
was a great guide. So I was very happy that that detail was added by Art Deving. So I did some measurements and I'm gonna cut out two centimeters on either side of the neck and chin area and then bring them together. Um, I just feel that four centimeters total is pretty good. Now I did have to do them in dotted iterations and then join up the dots because there is a taper, there is a curvature going on here. And then grabbing that Stanley knife and removing that excess. Now, grabbing some cheap and nasty super glue as always because this stuff sticks like shit to a blanket when it comes to urethane. Now, you do this in increments. I'm gonna start with the top where the chin is and line them up as best as possible. If it gets to the bottom and the bottom doesn't line up, it doesn't matter because it's gonna be hidden under the actual bodysuit. Again, you wanna do this little bits at a time. If you try and do the whole thing in one hit, you're gonna have pieces that are gonna be buckling and not lined up and not sitting flush and it's just gonna get ugly. So this actually turned out really well. I was really happy and overall four centimeters was the perfect amount to cut out from the cow. Now because we cut out the chin, we're also gonna have to add a zip because it's just gonna be way too tight to put the cowl on at this point. So I've just got a dress zip. I was gonna use um, an invisible zip, but it just got way too hard, way too tricky and the zip just wasn't cooperating in terms of um, unzipping and zipping up. So again, like the chin, just slicing it open, measuring it up and then pinning it in place and grabbing the cheap and nasty super glue to properly set it in place. But you definitely do need pins to hold it in place and I was really happy with how that turned out. It, it zips up and zips down perfectly. So you definitely do need it once you tighten that chin area. Now to color match this to the suit, I'm just grabbing a Liquitex Deep Violet. This is an ink and I'm airbrushing it onto the cowl. And once I did this, it matched the suit perfectly, but way too clean. Way, way too clean. Um, but I did have to build this up in increments, let it dry, and it really does soak into the urethane. But in terms of detailing the seams and darkening certain areas, I'm just gonna grab a black oil color, and I'm just gonna um, apply that to the cowl. And you have to leave it for about a good 24 hours, but I wanted everything to kind of look soiled in the seams. But apart from that, it matched perfectly to the suit. I was beyond happy with the end result. Alrighty, we're now on the home stretch with finally completing the cowl and eye mask for this phantom cosplay. So I wanted to show you something. Now this is the original urethane eye mask that I cast up. And it is flexible, it is soft, it is nice. The only problem is once you put it on your face and the slightest bit of stretch occurs, it distorts and you lose that shape. So what I did is I cast up from the same mold a solid, rigid, super cast version of the mask. It holds its shape, it's beautiful, and you can literally pop them on like sunglasses. So what I'm gonna do is put a Velcro tab on this side and this side and the opposite Velcro on the inside of the cow so I can literally just slide them on like sunglasses and Velcro them in place on the side of the cow. If I do have an elastic band going all the way around, and I put this on first and then try and put the cowl on, these are just gonna slide down because the cowl is quite tight now. But this is the best option. And Billy Zane's eye mask was quite rigid from memory and seeing photos on auction sites and stuff like that. So I'm pretty happy overall with how this has turned out. Now all that's left is to panda eye up and try this cowl on along with the eye mask. Alrighty, so we have the Velcro attached to the sides of the eye mask and the opposite Velcro on the inside of the cowl. So you can adjust the tightness that way. And again, they do sit like sunglasses, but then obviously you can really push them back into the cowl to make sure they fit nice and snug. So what I'm gonna do now is grab a makeup pencil and we're gonna stencil where to do the panda eyes because it is quite a specific shape and pattern. Obviously, I don't wanna go outside the lines and have it bleeding through out from under the mask. I want this to look nice, neat, and seamless. Now, it will bleed into my eyebrows, but that's okay. I've got pretty dark eyebrows, so that doesn't matter. Oh, jeez. Jesus Christ, I fucked that one up. <laughs> All right. Now for the panda eyes, I'm just using my standard Revlon Bold Color Stay. I use this stuff for panda eyes, for Batman and stuff like that. And it just, it hears really well. It's a nice matte black, but you obviously you do need makeup wipes. It's not something you can get off with water, like soapy warm water in the shower. You definitely need makeup wipes for this, but it holds on pretty damn well. Alrighty, let's have a look. Ah, perfect, all lines up. Let's pop this cowl on. All right, now before I put the cowl and eye mask on, I wanna show you guys the lengths I go to for cosplay. I had to shave 
this sides of my hair. Like my, usually my hairline comes down to a point here and goes down. But because these points here were just subtly sticking out of the side of the cowl, <laughs> I got my electric razor and trimmed them down. Like I put the cowl on first and lined them up as a, like a stencil and then shaved away that area. They still kind of bleed through a little bit, but I don't want to shave anymore because I just don't want to fuck up my hair just in case. Those are the lengths I go to for cosplay. They were just bugging me. Those little corners of hair just poking out. I don't know if it's one of those things where the cowl is too high, but I've measured everything up. Everything seems fine. But then I realized Billy Zane was completely bald under that cowl for the film. He had a shaved head and wore a wig when he was Kit Walker. But when he was the Phantom, it was just a bald head under there. So it didn't fucking matter. Anyway, on with the show. Now hopefully the eye makeup does not smudge. Um, one thing I actually should show you guys, it was a little detail. Um, how am I gonna angle this? Okay. So if you see the inside there, there's the uh, Velcro tab that's gonna attach to the eye mask. But as you can see here, here on the other side and here I've got some elastic and what that do and what that does is as you can see it pulls in the sides there but when um, my face is in there it snaps onto the side of my face because some parts along the side here they want to buckle and uh, kind of uh, bow out a bit and it just looks really weird and it's very annoying and my OCD is just like nah, not having a bar of that. So it's actually very reminiscent of Batflex Cal. Affleck's Cal had a very kind of shallow chin. So when his chin actually was in the cowl, it filled it out and it looked a lot more natural and hugged his face better. So I've kind of borrowed from that with uh, just putting some elastic in there. So let's try this on. Hopefully the eye makeup does not smudge off. Okay, oh. Okay. hair, make sure the hair out of the way, go away. So you see those little bits I got rid of? Again, they'll just do my head in. And look, they might be bleeding through a little bit, but yeah, I just had to get rid of it. Okay, so zip the back up. Where's the zip? Cool. Okay. Overall, pretty happy with how that's sitting. So the elastic here and the elastic here just help the sides snap on. It kind of contour with the cheeks a little bit. Now, I may have to tighten the elastic on this part here because it's still kind of bowing out and I can feel it's actually, there's no tension whatsoever. That's fine, that's a later problem. Now also keep in mind that this part of the cowl will be resting under the suit, so that kind of keeps everything sort of locked in and nice and tapered down. It's ridiculous the amount of engineering that goes into, uh, you know, film costumes, let alone cosplays. Bit of futzing required. That's resting pretty good. Oh my God, my hair, I'm really gonna have to gel this back. Okay, all right. Hell yeah, man, I'm really happy with that. Really, really happy overall with how it looks, how it sits. Considering what we started with, fuck. I really think this has got to work. This has got a lot of potential. I definitely am going to have this reprinted. Like I said, I had it scaled up 3%. I thought the urethane was gonna shrink, but in this case, the urethane did not shrink. But regardless of what we started with, we were able to salvage it, and this is gonna be a first good run slash mark one of the Phantom Cow. But I definitely will have it reprinted and remolded. Like I said in my shitty commentary, that's why I did the plaster bandage shell, as opposed to forking out a lot more money for a fiberglass shell, just in case this didn't work and I didn't blow the budget. Hell yeah, man, yep. Just looking in the viewfinder, that all looks pretty good. Even though this part here just kind of bows out a bit with the Velcro, it's kind of, Whatever, just stop nitpicking, Chris. So there we go, guys. The Phantom Mark I cowl and eye mask is done and dusted for this weekend at Supernova. We're three days out. I'm very busy weathering the rest of the suit as well as the boots. Uh, I actually ended up changing the belt and I will show that in the full reveal video. I just felt this updated belt just suited a lot more better and is a lot more thicker in terms of the buckle and the tactical aesthetic we're going for. So this Saturday, Supernova, Phantom. Sunday, I'm flying out to Western Australia in Perth for the week, so I'm looking very forward to that for a little break. Once I get back, I do want to organize a proper video and photo shoot with the full suit and the full final reveal. But for the time being, I hope you guys dug this little video of the uh, printing, molding, casting, and tightening process. Guys, wherever you are in the world, please have yourselves an absolute cracker of a day. I hope you will. Hope you're happy. Be merry. Be silly. And until next time, geeks, please always remember, 
cosplayers do it best.